If you want your pie to be the star of the day, you need to know how to use the flavor star. I'll teach you how in just a minute. Seasoning food is not just for the savory side. You need to also season your food in baking. The Flavor Star has five things on it. Salty, sweet, bitter, spicy, and sour. How does that translate to a pie? I'm about to show you how. But first, let's get our ingredients. There's some butter, chocolate, more chocolate, salt, cons, k syrup, maple syrup, a little bit of cayenne. Don't miss the sugar and the white sugar. And lastly, the bourbon. Which one's for the pie and which one's for me? Only time will tell. The Flavor Star, what is it? The Flavor Star is this magical thing that I, that I think God gave us in our mouth, right? It is the, the taste buds that are in your mouth and all the different areas of your mouth that receive flavor. But to receive flavor, um, you have to know a little bit more about them and kind of how to get them. Salt is probably the first part of it. We have salt, sweet, bitter, spicy, and sour. Those are the five areas of the flavor star. Those are the five areas of your mouth that receive flavor. Most of the time, people don't take into account how that works for baking. And so I want to expand your knowledge and raise the bar of how you bake at home so that your pies, your tarts, all of your baked goods will be the star of the day. Okay, and so first is to really understand what the Flavor Star does, and then we're gonna look at the, some of the ingredients and how that comes together. So since your mouth has all these taste buds in it, if you only have sweet, you're only using a portion of your mouth. But if you have something of all five, then you have flavor in your whole mouth, and that's what makes everything taste so amazing. But like we discussed in a previous part of this course, that salt is the driver. Salt is the one that without salt in here, you can, if you take this one ingredient out, most of the rest of this will not be to its fullest or it will just pass by and you won't even taste it at all. So we definitely have to have a little, a little bit of salt to make everything else come out. Sugar is one that is close to salt because sugar, even with the absence of salt, sugar can still be pretty sweet and you can taste it, but it's accented actually when you have a little salt around. So let's just walk through this particular recipe and let's like look at these ingredients. We have our, light, our granulated sugar here, we have our, our brown sugar here. And so why two different sugars? Well, because they serve two different purposes. White sugar is just for sweetness. That's really what it is. It melts in really nice and clean and smooth. Brown sugar is sticky. It still has molasses in it. And so that's where you're gonna get some bitterness too because bitterness is one of the five. And so that's why brown sugar has a little bit of that in it, corn syrup. The recipe calls for light corn syrup. So the corn syrup is gonna give you texture. It's gonna give you that ooey gooeyness texture of the maple bourbon pecan pie. Now, could you use dark corn syrup? This is not part of the recipe. Could you use it? Yes, you could. And this will also give you a little bit of that bitterness left in it, um, more so than the, than the light syrup. And that would, be, that would be the difference really of the two. Um, again, it's not part of the recipe, I just want to tell you about it. Then we have maple syrup, which is another sweetener, but it also has really that, that maple flavor, which is distinct on its own. And so this one is not necessarily as much for the sweetness, because we're getting that plenty of it from other areas, but we're getting it for its distinct flavor of the, the maple. Then butter, of course, butter just tastes good. We have those milk solids. Um, in there, and, and then we have the butter fats that's helpful. And then when it comes down over here to chocolate, so chocolate, you can have lots of different kinds of chocolate. This one is a, a higher quality chocolate. So you can go to the store and you can, you can just get chocolate chips, but if you want to raise the bar on whatever you're making, buy something that has a higher quality. Milk chocolate has more milk solids in it, it has more sugar in it. And as you start doing a dark chocolate, you're losing sugar and you're getting more bitterness. And so you really can change the entire outcome just by choosing what chocolate you want. And so this is where you kind of have a theme throughout all of the course is starting with the end in mind, thinking about where you're going and then backing into that. What do you want to have it taste like, look like, and be like before you start? And then the elements to get you there will, um, will start to define themselves. 
And then lastly, bourbon. Well, bourbon is just as complex as the chocolate. You can choose your bourbons for different reasons and for different attributes. All, I love all these bourbons. And bourbon is like wine. You want to cook with stuff that you would like to eat or stuff you would like to consume or drink. And so don't use the old wine for cooking. Right? Use fresh wine. Use, use a good bourbon. Don't, don't use a bourbon that's been sitting out open for a while and you've lost all the alcohol. Alcohol will, will burn off during the cooking process, but you want to have it nice and fresh and ready to go. And so um, this, this one here has a, has a, is really smooth. It has a sweeter undertone. Uh, this one has a little bit of tobacco and a little bit of berry to it. This one has a little bit more smoky elements than the rest. And so you can choose, again, the bourbons by what you're looking to accomplish. The pecans, toast them or not toast them? That's the question. We are toasting them for our recipe because the toasting will sweeten them just a little bit, but leave you some bitterness and develop their flavor. Some people go raw because they like that flavor. And so that's just personal choice, as well as some of the other ingredients that we've talked about, their personal choice. Um, but the pecans for us, we like, we like to toast them and they are the, a little bit of that bitterness. And then lastly is a little flour. Because of the flour and really the corn syrup, those two bonding together will create that gooeyness that we so love in, in a pecan pie. But flour itself is a little bitter as well. And since we have a lot of sweet, a lot of bitter to help balance it, helps the pie become more and more amazing. I would definitely suggest using some sort of heat, some sort of pepper. It doesn't have to be cayenne, it could be white pepper. I would definitely uh, stay away from black pepper, but some people would put a little bit of hot sauce as well in their pie and you'd be like, wow, I, why does this pie taste so good? He's like, it's the hot sauce. And people will be like, there's no hot sauce in here because you won't, you don't put enough to taste it. You just put enough for it to do its job, just creating that balance. So by the time we do this, we have salt, so we have salty. We definitely have plenty of sweet, okay, bitter. We're gonna have bitter from the brown sugar and from the, um, from the chocolate, salty, sweet, bitter, spicy from our cayenne, and sour is the, is the final ingredient. There is no sour in this one, and that's okay. But the more of the flavor star we have, the better the outcome. And that knowledge, I hope you will take it home and use it for your pie in this course, and use it in the rest of your baking and the rest of your cooking.